Electricity is one of those topics that causes some students a lot of problems. And sometimes when we have students in front of us in the classroom and we say to them, can you do this? And they'll say, no, and we'll say, why not? And they'll say, because I just don't get it. And we'll say, well, what is it you don't get? And they'll say, any of it, I don't understand any of it. And that can be quite frustrating for the, for the student because they don't really know why they don't get it. The teacher may have made it look so easy, but they don't understand how to answer these questions and they consistently get them wrong. And your ability to answer questions about circuits really does hinge on you having a really good understanding of two quantities, that is current and voltage. And if you understand current and voltage, or potential difference, um, then you'll be able to answer most questions that come your way to do with circuits. So what I'm going to do is show you a model. Now it's not a perfect model, there are some problems with it, but in physics we are concerned with models that we can use to make predictions about how nature behaves. And this model has some strengths and it has some weaknesses. Certainly when you get to A level, year 13, this model won't be very useful, but for GCSE level you can lean heavily on this model. What I want you to do is imagine that we have a pizza shop, and it's a very peculiar pizza shop indeed. This pizza shop has a rule. It will only allow you to buy six pizzas at a time. So let's call it the six pizza shop or something like that. Six pizza shop. Uh, and what I mean is, if someone orders pizzas, they won't allow a pizza delivery driver to leave the shop unless the pizza delivery driver has six pizzas with them. So if I have one house, perhaps down here somewhere, and they want to order pizzas, then the rule is they're only allowed to order pizzas if they order six. So this person in this house, I hope they're hungry because they need to consume six pizzas. And there's a route that the pizza delivery driver can take that takes them from the shop to the person's house, like this, and then back to the shop again. And so we have our pizza delivery driver over here, and I'll do my best to draw a motorbike. It's not a very good motorbike, it's a schematic of a motorbike, but okay, it works. And on the back of this motorbike is six pizzas all stacked up, and this motorbike is driving down here. Now they're going to deliver their six pizzas, and they're going to return to the shop. So this pizza delivery driver is here, with a box on the back, no pizzas, returning to the shop. And let us say that this shop uh, is sending out six pizzas to this house every single day, which means that every day we have one pizza delivery driver leaving the shop, and then one pizza delivery driver returning to the shop. And that's what happens every single day. So these are some peculiar rules from this shop. But let's imagine that now two people ring up, two shops ring up and ask for some pizzas. Now the rule is that only one driver can leave with six pizzas at a time. So we have two houses on our route now and both houses want pizzas. And they don't really care how many pizzas they get, they just want pizzas. And so the delivery driver leaves with six pizzas, goes on its journey. But the delivery driver now has to deliver pizzas to both houses. And so when the pizza delivery driver goes to the first house, they're not going to drop off all their pizzas. Let's imagine both houses contain equally hungry residents. So the first house, the pizza delivery driver, will choose to drop off three of the pizzas. And in the second house, the person, the delivery driver, will choose to drop off another three pizzas and so there are no pizzas left on the delivery driver. I could also have a third house. Perhaps now, word's getting around about the pizzas and how wonderful they are, and so the uh, pizza shop gets three orders all at the same time, but with just one driver. There's one route. There's only one path that connects from the shop all the way down to these houses. And so the delivery driver has no choice but to go to all three houses. And the pizza shop is only releasing six pizzas per driver. And so the driver has to make a decision about how many pizzas to deliver to each house. And the pizza delivery driver decides, in the interest of fairness, if all the houses are equally hungry, to deliver two pizzas to each house. 
like this. So on this model, what are these different parts? On this model, the pizza shop is a power supply. So if we wanted to, we could replace that with a power supply. Here is our power supply, um, drawn in nicely in there. This is the positive side because that's the direction from which the positive charge flows. So what does the pizza delivery person represent? The pizza delivery person represents the charge. And what is charge? It's just some quantity, some amount of something that is flowing. You don't have to know what it is at this stage. And indeed, if you want to have fun, ask a university physics graduate what charge is and watch them cry. So we have this stuff called charge, whatever it is, flowing through this, uh, this route, this circuit. So what do the pizzas represent? The pizzas represent an amount of energy per delivery driver, per charge. So the pizzas are the energy and the pizzas per delivery driver are the amount of energy per unit charge. Let's write that there. Pizzas are energy. There we go. Pizzas are energy. And so the number of pizzas per delivery driver is the energy per unit charge. And that's what the voltage is, the energy per unit charge. So these delivery drivers dropping off pizzas, what they're actually doing is dropping off energy. But each time the delivery driver drops it off, there's only one delivery driver. So this is the amount of energy, which we measure in joules, per delivery driver, which we measure in coulombs of charge. So this is all two joules per coulomb being dropped off. And what's being picked up at the top end by the shop? Well, that is not six pizzas. It's six joules of energy per delivery driver. That's the whole point of the shop and one joule per coulomb is one volt. That's what potential difference is. So on our model, we can change all these joules per coulombs into Vs representing volts. And what you'll see is that because there's only one pizza delivery driver at a time carrying six pizzas, so there's six volts uh, across this power supply here, the difference in the number of pizzas per delivery driver before and after the shop was six pizzas, so that's why it's a six volt power supply. And the difference for each of these houses is two joules per coulomb. I'm mixing up my analogies here, but I don't think that's a bad thing. I think it's going to help you visualise it. Of course, they're not houses, they're resistors, or in this case I've chosen to draw them as signal lamps. Maybe they're filament lamps. Um, but if they're all equally hungry, they all get the same voltage across them, or potential difference across them. Um, the hungriness of a bulb is its resistance. And so I said in this analogy that we are releasing one delivery driver per day. That was what I said. One delivery driver per day. That's what the current is. One ampere is one coulomb of charge per second being delivered from this power supply. So the current, and I'll put this, well, I might have to write it on the left-hand side because I've run out of room on the right. The current is the number of delivery drivers, deliv delivery drivers, per day. And the current in our circuit is the amount of charge per second. And day and second, they're just units of time. And delivery drivers are representing our charge. Okay, let's look at a slightly different circuit now. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to put my pizza shop at the top here. And this is, of course, our six pizza shop. So this only delivers six pizzas at a time. So it's the six pizza let's spell it correctly, shop, the six pizza shop. And this time we are going to employ more staff. So if there are enough people wanting their pizzas, we don't have to send one pizza delivery driver to each house one after the other in what we call in series. Now if we wanted to, there's a junction and a one pizza delivery driver could go one way, but another pizza delivery driver can go a different way. So let us draw two houses. Here's my house, 
and this person's hungry they want pizzas and here's a second house and this person's hungry they want pizzas and there are now two routes that those pizza delivery drivers could take they don't have to go from one house to the next they can go directly from the pizza shop here follow the hand around around here and then they get a choice they can either go this way and deliver a pizza to the house and then go back to the shop or they can go all the way to the bottom house deliver their pizzas and go back to the shop but the rule is still the same the shop has its rules and that is that it only allows six pizzas per delivery driver so how many pizzas gets dropped off at this house it has to be six pizzas and how many pizzas gets dropped off at this house? It has to be six pizzas. And this is six pizzas per delivery. So six pizzas per delivery driver. And if you remember our analogy, uh, where pizzas that were delivered per driver was our potential difference, that means that if we have a six volt power supply at the top, then we have six volts being delivered to each of our resistors. And remember, these aren't necessarily resistors. They could be filament lamps or any other component that has resistance. But what's happening with the delivery drivers? Because we've got two delivery drivers now per day leaving this, um, leaving this shop, each one with six pizzas. But how many delivery drivers go through the top route? The number of delivery drivers going through here is just one one delivery driver goes in this journey with its six pizzas and how many go on the second journey one pizza delivery driver goes on the second part of the journey down here with its six pizzas and of course those pizza delivery drivers both return to the shop which means in one day how many pizza delivery drivers travel on this part of road that I'm indicating here with my hand one. How many pizza delivery drivers per day go on this part of the road here? One. But how many pizza delivery drivers are on this part of the road here? Two every day. And remember that in our analogy, the number of pizza deliveries, uh, pizza delivery drivers per day was analogous to the current, the amount of charge that flows per second. So that means that when we have our components in parallel, then we have um, the same potential difference across each component and the current through the component is going to be determined by how hungry our houses are, our residents in our houses are. So there's our power supply. Here's our fixed resistor. Here's our fixed resistor. In this case there are lamps. And each one of these has got six volts being uh, delivered to it. Now because it's got six volts being delivered to it and we know how hungry they are, they will eat those six volts quite happily, so they want one pizza delivery driver per day. Let's say that's one ampere of current here, and one ampere of current here. That means that in this part of the circuit, there has to be two pizza delivery drivers per day, or two amperes of current. And if I add a third house in parallel, who is hungry, who is ringing up the shop, the shop will simply hire another pizza delivery driver. And there'll be another pizza delivery driver per day on this first part of the journey, indicated with my hand up here, and each of these houses gets one delivery driver, but this part of the journey will have two pizza delivery drivers per day. This part will have one pizza delivery driver per day. So if you tried to visualize your um, circuits, as pizza deliveries, it might help you, and try to remember the analogies there, which I'll summarise on the board now. Hopefully this is going to help you understand. Now there will be people that look at this and are screaming that this model has some fundamental problems with it, and they're not wrong, and we'll cover that maybe in a later video. But what we can do is we can write down some of these definitions as equations. And so our potential difference, we remember, which is another name for voltage, so we'll use V, is an amount of energy, number of pizzas, delivered per delivery driver. Well, that's per unit charge. And we use a Q to represent a coulomb of charge, a unit of charge. Our current, which we'll use the letter I for in amperes, that's going to be the amount of charge that flows, that's the number of delivery drivers, 
in a certain amount of time. So per second if it's charged or per day if they're delivery drivers. And those are our two equations for potential difference in current. Okay, I hope you found that helpful. I really do. It's um, a topic that often causes some confusion so I'm hoping this model will help you a bit. Uh, it would be tremendously helpful to me if you could share this with as many people as you can um, and like and subscribe. I know it's a bit of a cliche but I want to help as many people as I can with this little project I'm trying out and so I'm relying on you getting the word out to people. There are live tutorial sessions on the um, Saturday mornings at 10 o'clock in the morning so you should come along and log on to them and you can ask me questions on the YouTube or you can ask me questions in advance that using the Facebook Messenger uh, the link will be down below somewhere uh, but please as I say do like subscribe share if I get to a hundred subscribers I can change the YouTube URL so I'm relying on you lot to help me out um, but that's all I want to say thank you very much and hopefully I will see you all on the Saturday